Okay, Dr. C, thanks for being with us. So why does online health misinformation spread? What's the motivation? If you're not a doctor, why are you even sharing this stuff? Well, we all have a desire to know and to understand. And many of the health uh, problems that we face can be quite complicated to understand. It can be complicated to hear it from the doctor and certainly to comprehend it. It can very much cause a lot of confusion and in some cases anxiety. We often look for information that is perhaps less toxic than we want. For instance, if your doctor is telling you you need chemotherapy and many people think that it's going to be fairly toxic to your body, perhaps you're looking for other options. You're looking for the why. You're looking for answers, how long. And right now we're already in a pandemic with COVID-19. Many of us are asking, when is this going to be over? How did this happen? And so we look for these answers. We share information with our friends. And in some cases, that information may be loaded with misinformation. And it's something that was happening even before the pandemic, but it really kind of ramped up. A, a couple of uh, newspapers have done some reports on it, and doctors reporting it's happening more right in front of them uh, with patients coming in and, and giving this information to them, and sometimes even going with the stuff that they read on social media. But what are some of the risks following some of this, mis this inaccurate online information being out there, the risks? Well, anything that's attached with medical or health, you know, 80% of people who use the internet will use it to search for health information. And many of these sites don't have a credible or credentialed person delivering that information. And as a result from that, it can produce situations where you're receiving information that is harmful to your health. You may be avoiding life potentially life-saving treatments or medications just because of misinformation. And in worst case scenarios, it can lead to death, especially if, say, you're avoiding medications or treatments that have proven to be work, um, helpful to your condition. And so you have to be very careful about the sources and about the persons that are giving that information to you online. So help us identify, you know, what's real information, you know, credible information, and what's misinformation? I, I know a lot of uh, social media platforms have started to block some of this stuff, um, yes. but some might still get through. So what are, what's some advice when we're scrolling through our feed, seeing some of this stuff? Well, if you're looking at a paper or an article, you want to find a paper that is what we call peer-reviewed, evidence-based. You want to find an independent panel of experts that have vetted this information, found it to be credible. You want larger size studies. But if you're clicking on an article that's online, you know, read the whole article. Sometimes the headline has clickbait. Uh, if you see words in the title such as breakthrough or revolutionary or first of its kind, or if you see language that evokes fear or worry or anxiety, or if you see language that says, um, here's the secret, um, this is what they don't want you to know. Um, those are red flags you got to be very cautious of, and you want to really approach that with a lot of skepticism when you see that type of language or language that provides, you know, divisive energy and doesn't provide sort of all the answers. Be careful about the headlines and actually read the article. I always like to ask doctors, and you are certainly one, you know, where do you get your information? You know, what are some credible websites or, or sources for us to, to, to read? You know, we want to have the right information. Well, I always mention talk with your doctor. You know, when you're at your appointment or even if you have questions after your appointment, send a message, make a phone call to see if they have any information that they can provide to you about specifically your condition. But there are some credible sites, the National Library of Medicine's Medline Plus, that's a great website that really has the facts, basic information, uh, any information from say the CDC's website, uh, the World Health Organization, those are credible sites. Also, any headlines that you read, use some of the online fact checkers. That can provide you with some information about the credibility of what you're reading. And finally, any of the organizations, such as the Society for OBGYNs or Surgery or Pediatrics, they all have society information websites. It has a ton of patient information that you can tap into. So whether it's the Academy of Pediatrics or the American College of Surgeons, you want to find patient-directed information on these sites because it's going to be pretty credible without a lot of bias and information that you can use and then take it back to your doctor to make sure that medication, or I'm sorry, that information fits your condition. Dr. Cesar McFadden, thanks so much. Uh, helpful Thank information you. that we can use to you know, keep ourselves healthy and our families healthy. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Ben.